talk and welcome ladies and gentlemen to my Webster's progression guide. Today I'm going to walk you through all the steps you need to take to learn a beautiful, clean, fabulous Webster. And bear with me, I'm going to take you from the very basic fundamental, the cartwheel, which seems a little far removed, all the way to the Webster. And it might not make sense in the beginning, but as we get closer to the final trick, you're going to understand why all of these steps is essential and teaches you an important element of the final goal, a beautiful, gorgeous, fabulous Webster. This video is for you if you want to learn to Webster but you have no clue where to start. I might be terrified of actually committing to it, but it is also for the people who can Webster already but feel like there's still room for improvement. And then you might want to look back at some of these essentials and some of these early steps and they might help you figure out a part of your technique that is lacking finesse. Step one of our progressions is the cartwheel. We're going to start from here and work our way all the way up to the Webster. I'll be talking about two different styles of cartwheels in this guide, and to avoid confusion, let me explain the difference. There's the gymnastics and the capoeira cartwheel. In a gymnastics cartwheel, we complete the whole move on a straight line. We do that because in gymnastics, you want to flip straight over your head to get as much momentum as possible for any flips you do after the cartwheel. And you also perform the gymnastics part wheel in a clean line because it's more aesthetic and you can also land back on a beam. The gymnastics cartwheel also has you take off straight forwards. During the cartwheel you do a 180 degree turn and you land facing where you came from. The capoeira cartwheel is different because you're moving in a side-to-side -side motion. In capoeira, you're always facing off an opponent, so they move side-to-sides in their cartwheel, so they never lose track of where the enemy is at. This means they start off sideways and they finish sideways. starting with the gymnastic style cartwheel because it's a great way to figure out where you are at in terms of fitness and flexibility. Both super important to build up for your Webster. Now when you do the cartwheel, you want to make sure you're in a straight line. You want to practice kicking your back leg straight and as hard as possible. And you want to work on keeping or you want to work on performing your cartwheel as fast as possible. One thing I'd like you to focus on when doing your cartwheels is keeping your back leg straight and kicking it fast. The kick in the cartwheel is literally the same kick you're gonna use in the Webster. So the more often you perform it correctly, the more often you get it into your system, the more it becomes part of your natural movement and muscle memory, the better. So you wanna start doing it correctly when you do the cartwheel so you have perfect form later on in the Webster. So again, kick that leg hard, kick it uh, fast and keep it straight. The straighter your leg, the more swing, the more power you'll get out of your kick. Step number two. Are you ready for the one-handed cartwheel? We're working our way up towards the aerial, towards a full flip, but we're gonna get there step by step. We're now doing the cartwheel, we're doing it good, we're doing it fast and we are comfortable to slowly take away some pressure from our hands and to rely more on our legs to take off and to generate the momentum for the flip and carry us all the way through. That's what the one-handed cartwheel is for. It's kind of an in-betweeny step. Now, the way you want to learn the one-handed cartwheels is you want to really get good at normal cartwheels. You want to be able to do them as fast as possible and then a little bit faster and a little bit faster. When you think you can't go any faster, you want to practice a little bit more to get even faster. Now, this might take some time because you're not just getting better at the technique. You also need to give your body time to build muscle and to get used to it and to get more flexible and stronger and faster. So be patient progressing through these steps. Now. To get the one-handed cartwheels, you want to practice jumping off your front leg, your takeoff leg, and you want to practice kicking your back leg even harder and faster. With this combination, you should feel that you have to rely less on your hands to carry you through the whole motion. 
and that's when you play around with just taking weight off of one of your hands. You're still using both hands, but one of your hands has slightly more of your body weight than the other. Once you get comfortable with that, you can actually try taking your hand away fully. Now you wanna to learn to do it with both hands, with your front hand and with your back hand. Step number three is going to be exciting, it's the aerial. Now let's recap real quick where we are on our journey to the Webster and why we got to the aerial in the first place. I think the aerial is a really good step to learn in your progressions because it's actually a move you can learn without having to commit to a crazy flip. You can work up towards it in very, very little steps and that is hard with some of the other more basic flips. Another benefit of the aerial is that while performing it, you can always see the floor. So if you freak out, if you have a moment where you get scared, an easy safety is just to put your hands down. Of course, any of these moves still is risky, so be careful. Another extra bonus, as said before, the kick for the aerial is literally the same as for the Webster. So even if this progression is taking you longer than expected, the awesome thing is by the time you're attempting the Webster, you will have performed hundreds of aerials, which means you have done the kick for the Webster hundreds of times, which will give you a really solid base to then start the Webster. So we're doing good. The most important thing here is that you remain the clean technique and the standards you had for the gymnastics cartwheel and carry it through to your aerial. Starting at the beginning, one of the main differences is that you actually have to run into your aerial. Of course, you can do it standing, but it is actually the easiest if you come out of a slight jog. You're not gonna be sprinting. You're also not going out of standing position. A Little bit of a jog, and then you wanna do a little hop into a split foot takeoff. When you do the hop, don't jump too high. You just wanna do it just above the ground to set your legs up slightly in front of you so that you can then perform the aerial, carrying on the momentum you had from the runner. As you take off, it's important to note that the aerial is not performed in one spot. It is a move that makes you travel forwards, so you want to still jump forwards as you perform the move. Now, you have been practicing to take off from your front leg to really jump off the ground and also kicking your back leg to give you that rotation. Those two things remain literally the same as in the one-handed cartwheel and the normal gymnastics cartwheel. You just want to do them even more. With practice, you're going to get better and stronger and faster and it will automatically that will improve. You do have to keep in mind that you do that movement clean though. So stay straight, same standard as for the gymnastics cartwheel. You want to be able to land your aerial on a straight line. Again, we're taking off, facing forwards, just as we are on the Webster, that's why we're doing this. And then we do a half twist and we land on the same line, facing where we took off from. The one thing that is different from the cartwheels is that your arms don't need to touch the floor anymore. So now your arms are free to aid you in the actual aerial. So you want to use your arms to give you extra swing and momentum. To be honest, I still haven't 100% made sense of what my arms should be doing in the aerial and in the Webster. I kind of just let them do their thing and it seems to work for me. So it's hard for me to explain what exactly you should do with your arms, but I do use them and swing them up. So look at the footage of me in slow-mo and just try imitating that or play around and find your own version. Yeah, because <laughs> I actually don't know. <laughs> Our next progression is again borrowed from capoeira and it's called an O de frente, which uh, I believe means cartwheel facing forwards because that is what it literally is. You initiate this movement like a cartwheel, twist halfway through and end up facing forwards. This is really useful because this gets us a lot closer from the cartwheel to the Webster where we're doing exactly that. Now, how do you learn the O de frente? The first step I would uh, have you do is to do this tucked hip twister. 
This little motion will help you figure out the hip twisting motion and there's low risk for you to hurt yourself. <laughs> Fall on your back. After getting used to that movement, you want to do the high hip twister, which basically has you take off what's closer to a cartwheel, but then you tuck into the motion you already know of the hip twister, and that will make it possible for you to always save yourself and also make you comfortable going into the motion with a little bit more speed and getting your hips above your head. If this move is still difficult for you to get because I admit it is a little weird one to learn. It needs a lot of time to get used to. You might wanna try this little kicking exercise. It kinda looks like you're just jumping around like an idiot, but this can actually help you a lot in figuring out how to land one leg at a time. gonna go blind for the first time which means we're actually gonna flip over our heads and lose sight of the ground and we don't want to do a flip right away so we're gonna start with front handsprings front handsprings are really nice because you're actually going forwards over your head but you can actually use a lot of the techniques that you have now unlocked because you've been doing a lot of cartwheels when you do the front handspring very similar takeoff to the cartwheel you jog into it do the little split step put both hands on the floor and you have a strong leg kick that flips you over. You want to learn it first landing on two feet and then you want to progress to a step out of the front handspring. It's really nice to get those clean because they're a nice little in-between step between aerials and websters. Holy shit, you're actually still here and we made it to the final step. We're now going to actually do websters. Now, if you followed all the way through the video, what I said at the beginning will make a lot more sense. All the different steps we had through the way taught us how to kick, how to swing our arms, to get comfortable going over our head, turning our hips, walking in a step out. All these different elements will now, prepare, will now have prepared you to actually attempt the Webster. And if you can do all the previous steps, you should feel a lot more comfortable going into the Webster, a lot less to worry about. You can actually just focus on the few things that are new and that are different. Now, let's get into the technique of the Webster and what is new. I think it is important to say that there's different styles of doing the Webster. Not all Websters are the same. The two general ways people do Websters is anything from the very gymnastics Webster that looks a lot like a front handspring without the hands. Mainly characteristics are that whoever does the gymnastics Webster dips their head very low to the ground and they work mostly through kicking their leg which means to perform it you need a lot of flexibility and you've got to be quite fast and strong. Now on the other side of the spectrum you have a Webster that is more similar to a front flip. Here the chest doesn't go low to the ground. As you take off, you try to lift your chest away from the ground to get as much height as possible. When you do the front flip style Webster, let's call it, you rely less on flexibility and more on leg strength. Now, however tall you are, however strong or flexible you are, some of these will come easier to you. So it is worth just playing around a little bit, what feels natural, what feels nice. You should have quite a good feeling for it already from the previous exercises we've done. I'm personally somewhat in the middle. My takeoff is very similar to my aerial, which means I run up at about the same speed. I also do the same little hop into the Webster and the kick at my takeoff is exactly the same kick as I would do it for an aerial. I focus on keeping my back leg straight so I get as much swing as possible. I try to drive my leg up into the sky with as much force as I can. My chest does drop down so I can grab my jumping leg behind the knee. Grabbing my jumping leg behind the knee helps me tuck and it makes me rotate a little bit faster. As I do that final push off the ground while also grabbing my leg at the same time, I try to lift my chest up just a little bit to get some extra height. Now this happens very quick and it's very hard to see, but I do believe it gives me that 
extra like that balance between taking off and jumping but also kicking my back leg to give me that rotation yeah and then uh, a lot of these parts of the Webster will feel very familiar to you already when you do it mainly you're gonna do the flip while you're doing the flip try to tuck your leg in as tight as possible I only tuck my left leg my right leg just kind of does what it wants to do uh, and uh, then I walk out of the flip when it actually comes to learning the Webster, you might want to go around YouTube and look at some other tutorials and at some other different styles of Websters that people do, because what I do might not actually be the perfect Webster for you. But I believe if you've done all the previous progressions, that will have prepared you to basically attempt any other style of Webster because you have the right tools in your set already. So now go around and explore a little bit what different Websters there are and figure out what works for you. So now we're coming to the end of the tutorial and I just want to leave you with some general thoughts that will help you along the way. First of all, I'm not perfect, my technique is far from perfect, but these are some very useful tips that help me along the way and some lessons I've learned teaching others how to Webster and I hope they help you, but nothing works for everybody so play around and experiment and venture out on your own and check out some other tutorials. The more you know, the better, and the more you see other people do different Websters, the better as well for your understanding of the movement. Now, I also tried to make these progressions as safe as possible. I tried to build in very little steps, so you're never moving too far out of your comfort zone in one progression. And that makes it seem very safe, also the way I do it, probably feels very safe because I've done it a lot of times. However, when you do it for the first time, there is always a risk of injury and you could hurt yourself. So I recommend not necessarily trying it the first time on grass, find as safe of a surface as you can. We are in the business of minimizing risks because we wanna do this for a long time. So at the beginning, have a crash mat, maybe find a gymnastics coach to check out your cartwheel. Find a more experienced free runner to teach you or spot you. Do it into the swimming pool, a mat, then maybe progress into sand before you finally take it onto grass and harder surfaces. My point is, be safe, please. When it comes to how to use this guide, just because you've watched this whole video now and because your head understands how to Webster, this doesn't mean you can just go out and walk through all the progressions in one day. It does take a lot of, your, a lot of time for your body to get used to these movements. You have to repeat every step many times for it to get natural, for your muscles to get used to it, and also for your joints and ligaments to get used to it. I'm not talking about days, I'm not talking about weeks, I'm talking about months to years that this progression will take, especially if you're starting at the very beginning. So be patient and give yourself time. You should, in general, move on to the next step if the previous step feels very easy and you can do it at ease with no worries, without any stressful feeling and you are actually very confident. Then you can move on and try the next progression and you're ready. Do recommend you kind of watch this video the first time, map out where you want to go, where you are on this progression list and then go back and re-watch the guide as you progress to remind yourself. Also, if your Webster is good or ready, it could be worth it for you to figure out which one of these progressions you're not good at yet and then go back and master that step and very likely that little essential will then carry on into all the Websters you do and make you better at Websters. Um, now, this video is probably a few hours long and I could keep talking about it. There is a lot about Websters to be said. Now, once you learn them, that is just the very first step. You can play with the move, you can make the move pretty. There's a few things I do to make my Webster look more fabulous, I would say. And I would like to make a video about that one day, but for now, I just want to get you to the point where you can progress towards and try the Webster in as easy of a way as possible. So I hope this was useful to you. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoy nerding out about movement just as much as we do. So let me know if this helped you, if you enjoyed it in the comments and subscribe for more content, videos, awesomeness coming to this channel all the time. See ya.